Hi guys, today we're going to be reading a book called I Am Jane Goodall. It's by Brad Meltzer. You might have noticed it kind of looks like the other one that we read about Jim Henson, and it is. It's the same type of book. All right, guys, let's begin. I am Jane Goodall. My first birthday, my father brought chimpanzee named Jubilee. I love Jubilee. I used to leave everywhere. As I got up on my teacher, Jubilee was the one who had a chair. Okay, class. Now who knows what rabbit like to eat? Yes, Jubilee crap as always. I just love that I loved all animals, even Worms and garden. Did you go inside the house? Don't worry, not. they're safe. I can be underneath the pillow. My worms would be safe in the garden, so we took them outside and buried them back, back in their home. At five years old, I was curious to learn about chickens like this. I called my mother's hen house to watch. At first, all the hens were scared of me. Then I decided to crouch in the corner. If I had hens would run away. I was patient though. Finally, after the hours of waiting, I saw what I was looking for. Hens little and plop, there was an egg. Where were you? You've been missing for so long. We sent out a search party. You'll never believe where eggs come. It was my first search project. In addition to animals, I also loved nature. I named the chestnut tree Nuki and the beech tree Beach. Beach was my favorite. Thank you, Beach, for letting me read up here. Oh, that was another thing. I loved reading. Back then, my family didn't have a lot of money. To get books, we went to the library. When I was seven years old, I got a book that would change my life. It was called The Story of Dr. Doolittle. I read it, read it again, then read it again for a third time before I had to go back to the library. It was about a man who talked to animals. In the book, there was a parrot who said that if you want animals to talk, you need the power of observation. However, most is a do little an animal can chase a cliff. How across quick mega bridge. Right there, the monkeys joined to be. They became the bridge. Isn't that beautiful? We can change anything by working together. After that book, I vowed to go and live among the animals. By the time I was 12, I had my own nature group, the Alligator My We took nature walks and wrote down what we saw, or at least I did. And if you wanted to have a rank in had to be able to recognize 10 dogs, 10 birds, 10 trees, and five butterflies or moths. How about I go first? Sometimes to me she's going to name them all perfectly. Each one of us had our own animal name. Jane was the red, red emerald named after a baby butterfly. I the best student. Not really. I'm school. I didn't like beetles. But they were outside, or there were animals around. That guess that there was a lizard with no legs named Ivor, guinea pigs named Gandhi and Jimmy, racing snails numbers painted on them, Pickles the cat, Hamlet the hamster, and Peter the canary. And that didn't include the dogs I looked after, like like Nasty, who liked wearing PJs. Woof. That means he likes PJs. a job where I could learn more about animals. But back then, if you were a girl, people didn't think you could become a scientist. They expected girls to become nurses, secretaries, or teachers. I wanted to go to Africa. I wanted to study animals. They told me, you really need something. You'll find I never thought that. that soon I had my chance. One of my school friends invited me to be in Kenya. That's right. To pay for the trip, I worked as a waiter. 
sink and hid my money under the carpet. One day I closed all the curtains, counted it, and I've got enough. I'm to Africa. It took 21 days by boat. I was 23 years old. It all seemed like a dream until I saw a giraffe who stared directly at me. It had dark eyes, long lashes, a black tongue, and was chewing Acadia thorns. I knew my dream was finally the African Later, my life again. So, if, if you're going to meet Dr. Luigi, I'm Jane Go. No idea. Actually, he was an analyst, which means he studies how humans live, and also a paleontologist, which means he studied fossils and bones. At first, he hired the siren, but quick, quick, what are the animals, including his pet? Early, he told me about a new job. Chimpanzees are close. So be, it would be dangerous if we could find out how we would learn. About ancestors you live. I no college degree, no training, and no experience, but I want that job. Jane, I've been with you to say that. They're always served to laugh. And has them know where they actually live. I was also told that woman. Plus a companion. My mom offered to come and I was ready. I'll never forget the day, July 16th, 1960, the day I first set foot in what is today Gombe National Park in Tanzania, Africa. At 26 years old, I had finally made it to the home of chimpanzees. It was a place that would change my life. During one of the first explorations, we saw two chimpanzees eating in a tall tree. They noticed us and ran away. They're scared of us. The next day, we didn't see any chimps. There was no chimps the day after that either. For months, I tried to get close, but they kept running away. Then I started going alone, just me. I'd go to the high area called the peak and look down with my binoculars. That was my secret. Be patient. Learn about how they live slowly move closer and closer. In time, I saw that the chimpanzees would hang out in groups of six or fewer. The female chimps would be with the children and the male chimps would be with one another. They weren't mindless animals. This was a community. Still, it took nearly a year before I could get within 100 yards of a chimpanzee. One day I came back to camp and found out one of the male chimpanzees took our food, including our bananas. Fantastic! That means they're not scared of me now. I bet he'll be back tomorrow. The next day, I waited and waited. There was no chimpanzee in sight. Then at 4 p.m., I heard a rustling noise by the tent. It was a large male chimpanzee with a thick beard. David Graybeard. That was the name I gave him. Back then, people told me that there was a certain way to study animals that I shouldn't give chimpanzees names. They said that animals were supposed to have numbers, not names. Why? They thought animals didn't have personalities or emotions. They thought that if we gave them names, we'd start pretending they were like us. But that's what no one realized. They were like us. That day, David Graybeard took my nuts and my bananas. A month later, he took one of my hands. Even later, out in the forest, he slowly approached me and checked to see if I had a banana in my pocket. One of the chimpanzees now understand that I wasn't a threat. I was their friend, and they were mine. Over time, by seeing the chimpanzees as individuals, I could truly understand them. Who wants another banana? David was calm, but he liked getting what he wanted. It's okay, pal, calm down. Goliath is easily excited. William Shy, 
And old flow was a strong, strong always helped bring 